Hey YouTube, Dan from South Out Computing, and in this episode we'll be reviewing another 2.7 dual cam car dash cam, and that's coming up next. Hey YouTube, Dan from South Hawk Computing here and we'll be reviewing this 2.7 inch dual camera car DVR. I don't believe there's a model number on here, but there's multiple ones here. I'm going to assume maybe it's the S033743700001 or perhaps the X000Q4QOXX. Who knows? Could be one of those, but again, it's a 2.7 inch display car DVR with dual cameras. And let's get this guy unboxed. Okay, so now that we have this unboxed, we have the interior camera or front facing camera here. It's got the nighttime LEDs so you can see inside the cabin, a front facing camera. Um, on the top here, we have the connection for the GPS the SD or I should say the micro SD card DC in looks like this is the emergency button and this we have down up okay menu mode and the power button and the only other things they came with is the power oh I see here it doesn't actually get power from a USB connector matter of fact I don't see any USB on this particular device I guess the only way to get the actual footage off the camera is to remove the micro SD card. Well, that's definitely interesting. And this, of course, is the cigarette light adapter for power. We got our suction cup here with the GPS sensor, and that would obviously plug into there. So that's pretty much it. We have the manual that came with this thing, and as always, they are pretty basic, but this one actually tries to explain how the actual software works but we haven't gotten to that part just yet so we'll skip ahead to filming some footage out in the road and we'll be using for filming purposes we'll be using this G Skill 32 gig micro SD card so let's hit the road and see what this camera could actually do so sorry about that, I completely forgot we didn't go through any of the menus. So let's go ahead and do that right now. We'll hook it up to some external power. I'll show you one of my little infamous hacks that I've done here in the lab to get certain devices like this to actually power up while we're inside. So let's get to it. Okay, so right away this camera wants a format, so I just hit the down button here and I'm going to hit the OK button. So that seems like it's the center, so let's see, OK. Oh, hello. You could actually see me. So obviously it's complaining about the GPS up at the top here, so. But as you see, my nice head on the left side here and the right camera. So this looks very familiar like the software for that other dual lens camera that we had way back when. Don't remember exactly the model number, but we will include that link in the description in a moment. But the purpose of this is to actually go through the menus and it looks like it has a screensaver mode. So let's see if we can wake this up. It says it's recording. How about we stop the recording? I just hit the mode button, it's playing back, but how do we get it to stop? How about OK? There you go. Hitting the OK button will make it stop. Let's go to menu. So, yes, we've definitely seen this type of interface before. Let's see. Set the stamp. Yep, so we're going to set this. Alright, so we set up the timestamp or time setup I should say, format we just did, or I should say the camera did it automatically, the beeping that you hear as I continue down the menus, record audio, obviously that's if you want it's recording audio, your languages, LCD defaults, setting your GeForce sensitivity, and frequency, oops, 
see what the frequency options are 50 or 60 hertz I'm gonna put it on 60 and the uh, vibration detect and default settings so in the recording mode let's see what we got here and yep pretty much like our other dual camera channel 1 and channel 2 or if you only want one of them pretty much what we saw exactly in our other dual camera here channel 1 and 2 channel 1 and channel 2 it's just referring to the actual cameras not channels but that's it nothing else to the menus if we go back here and say OK and hit menu and we go back their modes are pretty much straightforward it's the filming mode the video playback mode Okay, and that's it okay so now we are ready to go take it out for a spin so we will be back in a little bit okay so here we are looking at a daytime shot I believe this was early morning on my way to work and pretty much you can see everything inside the cabin as well as in front of you way better than the R300 the camera that uses the same exact software as this one it also looks like the camera sensors themselves have been upgraded because we definitely didn't have this type of quality when we were dealing with the R300 camera so all in all very pleased with the video quality wish there was a way to adjust it the only thing I disliked about this camera was the audio was very muffled the audio wasn't up to par Next up, we have our nighttime shot with both cameras running. As you can see inside, the LEDs will give you marginal light. You could sort of see my face, but versus the ladder where you wouldn't see anything, I would say it does a average job. The front facing camera was actually kind of surprising here. It did really well when there's street lights and other vehicles around you. When the area was completely dark, it was getting kind of rough to see what was going on. But as far as the night vision goes in comparison to the other cameras that were reviewed, I would say this one's a little bit above average. So it's, it, it barely squeaks away with a thumbs up for its nighttime vision. Okay, so we just finished shooting a bunch of footage out in the car there, so unfortunately the next step is we have to remove the SD card from this camera and actually put it into our machine. You can't just hook up the camera to the desktop here. Unfortunately there's actually no USB ports whatsoever on the camera as well, so I'm going to go ahead and insert my micro SD card and it has a standard SD card adapter for it and as you can see it's showing up here so we're gonna open it and this camera pretty much mimics what we found in the R300 we're gonna post a little link on the bottom of the screen here for the other dual camera car DVR that we did a review about I want to say earlier this 2015 we did a review on the R300 which had two cameras it looks completely different but it seems like the software the camera itself I should say the firmware and the software to play it are pretty much identical when we open up this micro SD card here we have something called J player you can not actually access the files that are stored on the camera you have to use this third-party application so let's go ahead and open that up this is the standard interface pretty much the same thing that we are used to seeing on the R300 again I'm not gonna go too much detail here on how to use this but we're gonna change this to miles per hour I'm gonna pick a date so here we have a clip here that we're going to play and before we do that we're going to hit this maximize button here to make this viewer a little bit more spacious so we could actually see what's going on but it's pretty cool how you could actually see when your recording was and all the sub containers of that particular date and time so we got our g4 sensor here we got the real-time map tracking here I do have to admit the GPS tracking on this is way better than the R300. It doesn't take a full 5 to 15 minutes to get a good lock. Matter of fact, the average I was finding it about 3 minutes where it's able to grab my location and easily uh, follow it on its map once I go to look it up. But right here I'm going to hit play and as you can see the real time G4 sensor and if we skip ahead we'll get the actual tracking here so there we go finally got the green light interior camera is going we actually see everything pretty darn clear 
and as well as the uh, front camera here as well. Now let's say I wanted to save this clip here. I'm just going to go to the save button. It's going to ask me for the destination where I want to put the file. I'm going to say OK. And right here you can see all the clips from that day and you could actually select what time you would like from that one whole session of recording. So that one here, what was it, 808. So I'm just going to scroll down here and grab this one here from 808 in the morning and say save. Now if you check all these it will string them all together in one continuous AVI file. If you recorded it with either channel 1 which is the front facing camera or channel 2 which is the interior camera you'll see that but obviously I was recording both at the same time. I'm gonna hit save and a nice little progress bar comes across here and it'll save the file to my desktop. Do you have to say the quality is substantially better than the R300 as well? So what's the final verdict for this dual camera car DVR here? Well, for right off the bat, I could say that I definitely like this one way better than the R300. Even though these guys are running the same software, the fact that this one's got night vision for the interior cabin the, it appears the cameras and uh, both ends of this device here are way better than the R300. And the GPS synchronization happens way quicker than the R300 as well. The only complaint about this unit is the muffled audio. There seems like the either the microphone is hidden behind some sort of piece of plastic and it needs to be removed, but that's pretty much the only negative that I'm going to give this particular camera here. So all in all, if I had to say buy it or toss it, absolutely buy it if you're in the market for a GPS dual camera setup this is the one that you want to go for well that pretty much wraps up this review folks if you like what you see here obviously give it a thumbs up comment subscribe to the channel anything you could do would be greatly appreciated this is dan from south Hall computing and as always folks until the next time